This is Stephen Wren. I am a Cobb builder and home inspector in North Carolina, and I've been building with Cobb for the past quarter century. This video is about building a Cobb Dagon. It's a octagonal Cobb home that we wanted to get through the inspection process. We're digging a foot deep, and these walls end up being about 30 inches for the footing there. We're insulating the perimeter um, with styrofoam so we don't get to the fun cob stuff until a little bit later but we needed to have a very strong footing to make sure that everyone including the engineer and the building inspections department were satisfied that the cob walls would be supported properly so in order to um, satisfy the engineers and the building inspections department we also needed to run rebar all the way from the footing all the way to the bond beam that's going to be at the top of the cob wall which is what you would need to do with any type of masonry building To speed up the process of building the cob, we built these formworks. These are of my own design. Um, they worked fairly well. Basically, it's a two by four stud wall that has hardware cloth on the interior. We used two by sixes um, vertical forms spaced about eight feet apart for the cobdagon. These are temporary. They're just holding the forms there um, while we put the cob in. Lots of benefits to using forms. There, it allows a lot more airflow to move through. We can go up 18 inches at a time. It also allows a temporary roof structure to be put over the cob, so I never had to cover it up with tarps. So uh, having this simple roof structure allowed um, wrap up at the end of the day to go very quickly. We could work right up until it started raining and we never inhibited the cob from drying because it was covered in tarps. The formworks was also useful for the hempcrete insulation that we ended up using on the exterior. So we reused a lot of these formworks to tamp in hempcrete at the end, and you'll see some pictures of that. Since Cobb is an alternative build, which means you can't use the standard building code to build a house with it. You have to work with a design professional such as an architect. And you also need a structural engineer to prove that the cob walls that you're building will withstand any of the local loads that you have, such as wind loads or snow loads, earthquake loads, etc. So using these two professionals, you have the architect make the building plans that you want, and then you have them evaluated by a structural engineer. And the structural engineer will come up with a number for how strong your cob has to be, basically the compressive strength. So this leads to a number of steps that you have to do with your architect in order to get the cob building plans passed, the plans reviewer at the building inspections department. Basically, you will be working with five items about your cob walls that your architect will need to assist you through since you're not using the building code. So the first of those are the walls themselves, the compressive strength of the walls, how they're designed, how they're made. You will have to have samples made before you submit your plans for review that show that your cob is as strong, has as much compressive strength as the structural engineer determined that you needed. So a typical cob compressive strength is maybe 80 to 100 PSI. Once you have those samples, you'll also need to do an in-process compressive strength test later. The second one is with the box beams or lintels that go over the openings in your doors and your windows. So these are designed by your architect and they need to be inspected when you get to them in the building process. The third thing is the bond beam at the top of the cob wall. This is something that you need for any masonry wall. And this is how you transition from the masonry to the wood framing. The fourth inspection that you'll need from your design professional is for the electrical work that you're going to put in your cob wall. And the fifth inspection that you'll need is for the insulation that you will likely have to put on the exterior of your cob wall in order to get cob past the energy code. In addition to using formworks to speed up the process and make the finish work easier, I also employed a few different methods of mechanical mixing to cut down on the labor. We tried several different things, including using a mini excavator, a paddle mixer, 
uh, cement mixer. But what we settled on as the best choice was a skid steer with a cement mixer attachment on the front. This allowed not only to make large quantities of high quality cob at a time, but also to move it to the site where we needed it and to raise it up onto the scaffolding so that we had a lot less lifting to do. Sometimes we were able to move cob directly from the skid steer into the walls or, or very close to the walls, which saved on labor tremendously. As we got to the top of the cob walls, we did our box beams over the windows. Those were made out of framed lumber that we filled in with cob. And then once we got to the top, like with any masonry building, we started putting in the box beam. So the rebar is run all the way from the footing to the top of the cob wall. And they come up through these cement blocks that are basically U-shaped. And you tie horizontal rebar into the vertical rebar as it comes through and you end up pouring a continuous bond beam all the way across the top of the cob wall. That does several things. It helps transfer any lateral loads from the roof to compressive loads, which the cob is really good at absorbing. It also allows you to attach a top plate and start framing on a roof for the cob. Once you get to the top plate, you are able to transition to the regular building code. You are no longer needing your architect at this point. You can go by the, the regular residential code book. We chose to frame the interior octagon out of wood. We had most of our systems here, especially our plumbing, the main bathroom, and a lot of the electrical work. Having that wood framing allowed for much easier installation of especially the plumbing systems that we needed to put in. When, where we put electrical in the cob walls, we channeled out at least an inch and a half deep and we ran wire directly in the cob. We needed to use UF wire because it's in contact with earth. We were able to use a lot of locally milled wood for this house. We had a lot of pine made into the ceiling boards. We had a lot of older oak that we used for all the trim. And for the kitchen, we had an amazing mix of woods, including walnut and cherry, which turned out very beautiful. There was a lot of recycled materials that were used. There was a place in Greensboro that recycles pieces of granite countertop and makes them into tiles. So we used some of that for the tile work. We went with a wet room design for the master bathroom, which is inside that interior wood framed octagon. And that turned out really well. We used a tile pattern that approximated flowing water. We did end up having to fill in some areas to even out the interior of the cob walls with the forming system. I believe that could be improved upon for the next time with a refinement of the forming system. Primarily, we went with a lime plaster on the interior, but we also had a beautiful earth-finished plaster wall in the bedroom that turned out really well. For the exterior, we needed to get some type of insulation system on the house. And when we went through the permitting process, we decided on using three and a half inches of hempcrete to go on the exterior to get the R values where we needed to. Our architect recommended that we transition from the cob to the hempcrete using a lime wash. So we covered the entire exterior in a lime wash. We used the formworks to put in the hempcrete for the first several feet. Unfortunately, we were not able to get a second batch of quality hempcrete to finish the remainder of the house. And for time purposes, we had to transition to some more traditional sheet insulation forms, which we then covered in metal lath to continue onto the hempcrete. The hardest thing about cob is to get it past the energy code. So although cob has a lot of thermal mass and can retain heat, it's not that great at resisting the flow of heat. So it has a low R value generally. And that necessitates either adding insulation to the exterior and or beefing up insulation in other parts of the home to make up for this deficit. Even though there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears shed over the making of this cob house, it did go generally as we had planned. And we were able to get this cob home through the permitting process with our local building department. Overall, the local building department in Orange County, North Carolina, ended up being incredibly supportive and interested in this project. And we were also able to complete the project within our budget and turn a profit from this spec cob home.